Welcome to this runic deck profile. It's runic synchro, not runic floodgates, so please stop shivering your timbers. But before that, I would like to address a couple of things. First of all, it's uninteractive by nature is what people would say about runic, despite the fact that I'm not playing any floodgates. And while I understand because deck out is inherently kind of uninteractive, especially if you're manufacturing it by banishing cop cards of your opponent's deck, you have to consider that even though it's the most competent deck out strategy that I can think of personally, it's still not completely that effective. You see, the thing is, if you want a deck to win, win, it does that within the span of a turn or two, maybe three. Now, if you draw the fucking go to with the sauce hands, if you draw everything you needed, like double fountain, triple runic spells, including like a tip and a golden fountain or something, and you're able to go off, no hand traps, whatever, your opponent doesn't do anything on their turn or anything, they do nothing, you're just allowed to fucking runic bonanza, you only get to deck out by turn five. That's an, a, that is an abnormal amount of time for something that's supposed to be really good at what it does to actually do that. And in most cases, duels go to turn 10. The deck out is slow, sometimes they maybe banish 10 to 15 cards a turn, which might be a lot, but it's uncommon. But overall, it takes such a large amount of time to actually accomplish just pure deck out that the uninteractiveness is kind of counteracted by the fact that it's just simply not that good unless your opponent is playing something that isn't good enough. So that's at least what I like to say regarding that. But let's go into the actual deck profile, runic synchro, what it do, how it do, why it do, who. So first of all, I've taken reference from Joshua Schmidt for this deck list over here. And I've tested Rose Dragons, I've tested the punks that he suggested. I've kept the fables as they are because I think the fables are fucking perfect, but I think I've settled on this list in particular, so if you want to see the source material and someone who is goaded with the sauce when it comes to runic, then Joshua Schmidt is your guy. But hey, maybe let's start from the beginning. What, what the fuck do you do with this deck? But what exactly does this deck do? Well, in my opinion, it does multiple different things, which is what makes this deck kind of hard to pilot in the first place, alongside the fact that combos aren't very linear. Number one, you're seeking to make some synchro monsters. You're thinking to basically make Cheng Yang and Barone, ideally both of them, but most of the time just Barone because it's the better option. It covers more general situations as soon as you fucking can. The runic monsters actually make this extremely easy because you can summon any level two, level three, or level four. You can discard things like the Fabolds, get them to summon themselves, you can make the punks and whatever, and you can also do things like Hyper Librarian, Coral Dragon, maybe Andraith, maybe even Reagan. You can do a lot of drawing shenanigans, and because of that, it's not the hardest thing to do, but getting two level 10 synchros is a bit tough in a lot of circumstances to do turn one. Number two, you're meant to deck out your opponent over the span of 10 turns or more. This deck's main purpose is mainly to make the synchros to then hopefully aggro your opponent into submission once you get enough, and also deck out your opponent, make sure they're running out of options and controlling the board, and see you're controlling the board with your runic quick play spells and just recycling them with fountains upon fountains. Yeah, that's it. it it's three objectives into one deck, but the way you actually achieve those is pretty damn complex if I do say so myself. You see, the thing is, this deck is extremely non-linear, and because of that, I actually really fucking adore the way this deck plays. Because all the runic spells can summon a runic monster, but not all runic monsters are equal. You see, sometimes it's ideal to summon Hugin, but only if, and only if, either you have nothing in your hand and you're able to put a level 3 tuner like Ace the Almond, or if you can normal summon something like an Ash Blossom, or if you opened a Serbarl. But then, if you open Serbarl and Hugin, Sure, that technically means two runic spells plus Sir Barrel is technically a level 10 synchro. You are losing out on some draw power that you could have gotten normally if you had opened some other different types of monsters, like let's say a level 3 tuner, because then you could get the level 3 tuner out, you could get the moon in, then you could make Coral Dragon, and then you could make something like a Gary, and then you could get an extra draw, so there's disadvantages to that, and at the same time, you could also just summon this thing right off the bat if you have everything else you need and you just have a level 2 tuner that you can make a level 6 with. There's so much you can do with this deck that it's kind of suffocating, at least when you first approach it. Additionally, the thing is, all these synchro cards are just extenders, by the way. Your combo starters are the runic stuff, but you can't control, you can't search out the extenders except for maybe the punks right? But even then, that's like so hard to accomplish consistently that it's just up to luck what you draw and then whether you're able to fountain into other things that can let you pop off more. And it's that luck factor that you have to take into that makes it harder to pilot because then you have to manage the risk of if, if I end up drawing into something good, that's good. But if I don't, then I guess I'm fucked, right? And so that kind of also makes this deck a little bit less good 
than runic floodgates because when you draw the floodgates you can just set them and then have an immediate impact but with this you kind of have to combo off and if you don't you're not really doing anything except maybe popping a card or two it's not really doing too much to your opponent is it and again this deck plays extremely non-linearly so um yeah there's just lots that can and can't be done with this but hey the best thing we can do is to learn by fire we're going to go into a couple solo duels to show you just exactly what this deck can do given normal circumstances. All right, so for example, over here, we've opened a fountain, a couple of flashing fires, a called by, and an ash. This is actually a pretty lackluster hand, in all honesty, but, but, as long as we have a little bit of luck and can draw into one single runic spell, this hand goes from doo-doo water to something that can actually save us. So we're going to first activate fountain. I normally do this anyways so that we can bait some interruptions, maybe a ghost ogre right? And then we're going to go ahead and fire off Flashing Fire. Flashing Fire's effect is going to summon a Runic from the extra deck, and we're going to go ahead and summon Moon In. The reason why we're summoning Moon In is that in addition with Ash, we can make a level 6 Synchro, and well, depending on how lucky we get, we could make a, we could make a Barone or Cheng Ying. We're going to discard the Flashing Fire and then activate the Fountain so that we can then shuffle both of these back in the deck, and now we just have to pray that we open another spell that we can use that we haven't already gotten, i.e. another Flashing Fire. So, we're gonna let this all resolve, Fountain's gonna resolve, we're gonna shuffle both of these guys, the order doesn't matter, and we're drawn to, this is unlucky, but we at least drew something that's of use. So, now that we've kind of established what we've got here, we're gonna activate Allure, because why not? And then we're going to normal summon Ash. You see, these are one of the weaker hands that you can encounter, but, well, with a little creativity, we can do this. So we can use Moon In, which is a really good starter if you open a level 3 tuner, because you can make Coral Dragon, which can then draw you more, and um, I think you can kind of see where that happens, right? Next, we're going to activate the Freezing Curses in order to summon another Runic, and in this case, we're going to summon a boy Jerry, Gary, whatever you'd like to say. Gary's goaded, you need to have run three of them, precisely because level 6 tuner plus Gary, basically Coral Dragon plus Gary, is something you do very frequently. Whether it's turn 1, or it's turn 3, or it's turn 5, you're accessing Gary at some point in your duels if you don't immediately lose. Then we make Baron de Fleur, and we're gonna draw one off of the Coral Dragon, and then, well, hopefully we draw something good. This is a bit late, but whatever, that's still fine. We can still show off another combo an X turn, but hey, this is just kind of showing off the basic combo with a bit of a bricky hand. I'm just gonna end turn, let the opponent do whatever the fuck, I'll probably just cut to the future. And now I can show off another combo line that you can do that can let you result into what's basically a level 10 synchro, right? Now, this is a more of a weird, a little bit wacky, if you say so myself, of a combo line, but nonetheless, it's still valid. We're gonna use the Yaman and we're gonna search for a level 8. Reason why we're searching for level 8 instead of a level 3 tuner, which we don't run, is because this plus Sir Barrel is a level 10. So we're going to tribute a punk, we're gonna summon the Ogre Dance, and then we're going to activate the effect of the Flashing Fire. This is going to then discard Sir Barrel in order to summon the Hugin. Right over there, Hugin summon, and then we're gonna use effect to discard the Sir Barrel in order to search for another fountain. There's a bunch of different reasons why this is a really good interaction to have because we're mainly getting another fountain so we can do another draw cycle to hopefully draw into some fucking gold. And B, we're also just discarding things to get more combo potential, right? So we're gonna let this all resolve. Hugin searches for fountain number two. Then the effect of fountain resolves. We're gonna shuffle both those bozos back in the deck gonna draw two smiting storm and a bonk not great but there's still something and then so borrow effect activates its mandatory summoning itself and then we can go ahead and make a level 10 synchro now we can either make changing with the survival and the ogre dance which is an interesting combo line that happens occasionally right or we can also synchro these two off into a cupid pitch and the reason why we would like to do cupid pitch is that it can increase its level it'll become a level 6 tuner then you can summon Gary off of a runic spell, and then you can make a level 10 synchro as well. That's an alternative way, which also lets you burn for a thousand with the effect of Cupid Pitch, and also lets you search for another copy of, let's say, a Bonk or a Ziaman. But in this case, we want to cut things short, so we're going to go ahead and make the Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chungus.
And then, well, things are pretty simple from here on, right? We've established both of our big towers, basically. What we want to do now is we want to keep on activating Fountain, keep on drawing our Runic Spells, keep on controlling the board, and accessing utility and also just general draw power to out-advantage our opponent, right? Hyper Library, when you open things like the Punks and the Fables and multiple Runic Spells, is goaded with the sauce and lets you draw so much. I've had turns where I could summon this and this and this and still have multiple Runic Spells in my hand. It's fucking crazy. Or you can do things like, let's say, summon... Fabled on Wraith, which can soak up negates. You can have Crocodile Dragon, which is funny. You can have Avalusa. It's a very possible summon. Not gonna lie. You have Reagan, who can get you out of really, really weird hands as long as you have a Fabled and, let's say, a Moon in on field. And, um, well, you just consistently keep on using these things. Please do keep in mind, though, that this deck is extremely non linear. What I showed you is one situation out of potentially tens of tens that don't really result in the same things. Normal summoning Ash isn't always ideal, it's pretty obvious, right? You want to hold Ash for Brand Infusion or something, so having to normal summon this bozo isn't exactly, well, I just said it, ideal. And because of how you just have to draw into the extenders, hopefully off of a fountain, there's a degree of risk that you take, and, well, a lot of times it might not actually present itself as a risk taken well. Additionally, this deck can also be kitted with very different synchro engines depending on what you want. Assault mode can be put in if you want to, but more importantly, Rose Dragon is something that I've considered and put on my YouTube community channel where I, I basically just said, hey, I made Rudic Synchro with Rose Dragon. Here you go. I've tested it out. It's good in some cases, but really it's a normal summon hog of an engine. I would rather run the punks because the punks with the Fabled Servaral can make that level 10 synchro as we just saw in that replay, as opposed to the Rose Dragons, which can't really do anything except facilitate more synchro plays, but you need the Runic Monster to do that. Being able to do synchro plays with the absence of runic monsters like Hugin, Gary, or Moonin is extremely valuable, which is why the Fabled's and the Punks just do so well, because again, 8, 2, 10. That's very convenient. But of course though, even though this is a deck profile, I haven't really gone into the card by card and talked about really what the cards do in the first place. I've kind of just jumped in on the combos and talking about the nature of the deck itself. So let's actually do that. First of all, this is a deck that I think you have to play the Fables with. They're super strong. The Fables are Burrow when discarded, a special summons itself, and the Bunk can discard a Fabled card from your hand, which is always going to be Sir Burrow when it's in the graveyard and then summons it itself, but then it's banished when it leaves the field. Still, though, great fucking extenders, and I swear to God, I'm going to be running Sir Burrow in a Runic Sprite. It's going to be spicy. It's going to work, I swear to God. Now, hand traps, again, hand traps, you could choose not to run any of them. You already have lots of draw power, and drawing into hand traps kind of makes it dead but i still run two ash blossoms because in those fringe cases like i showed you in that replay it can come in use especially when you don't have access to any other tuners and i mean no tuners means no synchros and you don't have floodgates to fall back on so kind of really need them you also have things like no punk Yaman, we have foxy tune we have ogre dance and we have two copies of the e telly one of them is a royal let's go the reason why the punks are so good is because level eights and the level two fabled can be extremely weird ways, but still viable in certain fringe cases to go into your Cheng Ying or your Baron. You also have the Amen, which can be used with your Hugin or with your things like Moonin to make things like Coral Dragon, to make things like Fabled Andreith. No, wait, you can't make Fabled Andreith to make things like Hyper Librarian. It's really good as a backdoor option, and the Amen can still just search out your level 8s, which can be at the very least really fat fucking bodies. And then while well, we play some pretty standard things, we play two called bias because I think called bias is good, and then we play triple copies of Dispelling, triple copies of Droplet, triple copies of Smiting Storm, triple copies of Slumber, triple copies of Freezing Curses, triple copies of Destruction, triple copies of Flashing Fire, triple copies of Tip, one Allure, one Allure only, and three copies of Fountain in the main deck. Now if you don't know what all these does, Fountain lets you actually quick play spells from your hand basically during either player's turn, and it can also shuffle up to three runic quick play spells after you activate one on resolution uh, back into your deck, shall draw the same number, so basically just draw three during either player's turn. Hopefully you draw into something good off of that draw three, who knows. Tip is just banish one off the top of opponent's deck after you search a runic card. We have Flashing Fire, which destroys a special summon monster opponent controls and banishes top two. We have Destruction, destroy back row, and then draw uh, and then banish four. We have Freezing Curses, which is negate effective effect monster on the field. Then we banish top three. 
We have Slumber, which is target a monster you control or any con anyone controls. Make immune to destruction by battle card effect for the first time it happens, and then banish the top three of opponent's deck. Smiting Storm, up to the number of cards your opponent controls, banish those things from the top of the deck. Droplet, your opponent draws one, then banishes four off top deck. And Dispelling, where if your opponent adds a card from deck to hand, then you can just simply make them discard one card randomly and then banish top two. Also, side note, Dispelling and Golden Droplet have a really nice interaction where if you Golden Droplet, then on a resolution, you can Dispelling, so then your opponent doesn't actually get the plus off of the draw one, and they also are six cards off the top of their deck less, which is pretty funny. We also play two Hugin. Three is optional. I think three might even be better in certain scenarios, but for now I'm playing two because uh, I don't want to use my CP yet. I want to use it for sprites. We have one Moonin. One Moonin is still important. Run the one Moonin. We have the triple Gary. Gary's really important for level six synchros, so like Cupid Pitch when it levels up, as well as Coral Dragon. And also it can infringe cases, recycle things like your Runic Fountain or Runic Alert if you really think it's necessary to recycle. We also have Fabled Reagan, which is basically just using Fabled cards you can draw two if you have nothing in your hand, basically. If you have one card in your hand, you draw one, and if you have more than two cards in your hand, or two, then you draw nothing. But it can still be very helpful when your hand gets really empty, and it has come in clutch like one time, but that one time isn't too uncommon to see. We have Hyper Librarian, so that if you end up making multiple synchros, making a Hyper Librarian prior can help you plus like fucking crazy. Coral Dragon is the goat, I just exited him out of the deck, what the fuck, where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can draw one, but you can also discard one to pop a card on the field, which can help with breaking boards. It's overall really good going with Gary, it makes a level 10 synchro. We also have another level 6 synchro, which is Fabled Andrath, which is great when you use Gary and a level 2 tuner that's Fabled, which can either soak up a negate, or lets you draw to discard one, which can be quite useful, especially if you have another runic or fabled synchro or fabled card in your hand. Sorry, I can't speak. Next, we have Crocodragon Dragon Arcthus. In those really fringe cases where you can't actually make a level 10 synchro, this is the next best thing. You can draw one off of it. You can also discard multiple cards to pop cards on the field. Not bad, just not the best. It's there because it might be useful. You also play a copy of Baron de Fleur and Chang Ying. These are your win cons, but ideally you make Baron de Fleur first. Then we have copy of Appaloosa. This can be anything. I would suggest putting Underworld Goddess here actually because it's not uncommon that you'll go into a really fat fucking body. You won't have enough attack on Changing to beat over it. So you kind of need to just kaiju over it, but you can't really run those in the main deck. So, well, Underworld Goddess is a thing. And well, that's it. And hey, if you want to see some more professional gaming content, then you can check out some videos like the ones that are on the screen right now. They're pretty, full, they're pretty fun. They're pretty cool. Hope you guys check it out. Bye-bye.